Hi, I'm Dale Klofer. I am a part owner of Klofer Holdings with my brothers and my parents. So our feedlot operation is uh, taking cattle from a lighter weight of 600 pounds and taking it all the way up to 1,600 pounds to a finishing product that is destined for our tables. To maintain good animal health on our farm, there are what well, I consider three main keys. One is fresh water, clean bedding, and good feed. Uh, the rest is, for us is taken care of with ventilation and management by people on our operation. So our employees role with our animal welfare is to keep an eye on every animal. So whether they're in the pens bedding, cleaning, or cleaning water bowls, we make sure that they see every animal, see how they move. And if there's any issues with something, they usually write it down and let one of us know and then we will go and we'll examine ourselves and we'll see if the animal needs to be pulled. I'm Van Mitchell, uh, one of the veterinarians at Metzger Veterinary Services there in Linwood. Uh, we specialize at our clinic in beef medicine. So my role in that, keeping cattle healthy, is developing protocols with uh, the very best products available for vaccinations. Um, we want to we wanna ensure these cattle have a good vaccination protocol from the time they're born all the way to the finishing period. And we want to put that health protocol into place so that we can start the cattle off on the right foot. So it's very important when we're handling these animals that they're handled in a quiet, calm manner. Um, stress on cattle relates to, to cattle health. Uh, the more stressed they are, the less they respond to vaccines, and the less that they, they gain weight and, and just have an overall healthy experience. So when we're handling these animals, whether it's loading them on a truck, unloading them off of a truck, uh, running them through the, the chute to be processed, it's very important that they have it done in a quiet manner if possible. Uh, we like to take our time with the animals to make sure that they move slowly and calmly and that uh, they have a stress-free experience here as much as possible. So our staff are trained on protocols of cattle handling which are uh, giving them space, handling calmly, quietly. Uh, there's no hollering and screaming at them because cattle don't operate the way, the way you want them to sometimes so you have to work at their pace and the way they want to go. Uh, so our employees are aware of the situations that if a cattle is in a flight or fight zone that you need to be cautious of it and watch what you're doing. So when it comes to uh, positioning on cattle, a lot of times even in a chute when you're running them through you don't need to, to push on them or prod them or anything. A lot of times you step from their eye to their hip and they'll automatically go ahead and step forward. So in the, like in a, we call it a flight zone, when you get behind their shoulder, most of the time they're gonna be apt to step forward. Uh, again, some of them will take a look at you and wonder what you're doing and you can move accordingly. Most cattle are pretty good, but every now and then you'll get some that are very aggressive, they'll wanna charge you, push you up on a wall. So it's very important that, uh, that new employees do get to know the safety of being around cattle. Every farm has its own different practice on animal handling. Here for us, uh, two people is what we use to handle cattle. As long as there is no problems, uh, two people can easily move a pen of cattle if need to be or segregate one or two. So when working with a handling facility like a, an alley and a chute, it's very important that everybody's on the same page. Uh, I think communication is probably the biggest key to safety when running cattle through these is to make sure that uh, everybody has a specific job. Uh, one person is, is catching the animals up front, somebody is bringing them up the alley, somebody is putting them in the bud box or in the, the, into the tub, and everybody is uh, communicating if an animal is to, uh, to come loose or um, any other issues that everybody's on the same page. That's, I think that's key to, to safety uh, is, is communication. So when our cattle come in off the trailer, uh, we have certain protocols depending on the animals. So if they're on a long trip to our farm from the west, we have a certain protocol we follow with our veterinarians. So it'll go from uh, treating with shipping fever to vaccinations to worming protocols. These protocols are important because we want to maintain good health of our animals and then we also want to provide a stress-free environment later on down the road because if you have to ha start handling sick animals, they can be a struggle sometimes. Everybody knows what it's like to deal with a sick animal, that it's, it's never a joy for anybody. So these protocols are put in place so we don't have to 
handle the animals any more than they want to be handled. Employees at a feed yard, they play a vital role in the nutrition, uh, whether it's the person doing the mixing or the person uh, delivering the feed. Uh, we could run into major wrecks by having the wrong feed delivered to the wrong pen. If we get a finisher diet delivered to a, a new calf uh, stalker pen, then we can have major grain overload issues and really cause uh, health issues with those cattle. Also, if there are any cattle who have been, uh, we've had some sickness in them and we have them some medication going at that time to get them over the sickness, we got to be sure that that load does not get delivered to cattle who are anywhere near market weight because medicine has a withdrawal period on it and we want to make sure that there is no medication going into animals that will be slaughtered soon. So attention to detail is, is major when it comes to delivering feeds and mixing feeds. So our feeding system, it's uh, called Performance Beef. It's done on an iPad so we have a ration set up and then the person that's feeding knows what the, that certain group is getting. And then once they come in to feed, if they notice that there's feed left over in the bunks, they'll take a bunk score of uh, 10, 15, or 20% of what's remaining in there. So the next time that we feed, we will cut them back so that there's about 10% left in the feed mangers at all times. We don't want the feed mangers to run empty because we feel that if the cattle run short on feed, they will Eventually they'll gorge and then our feed intakes will go up and down so we like to keep them consistent. And then in the finishing period it's, it's very important that we keep, a, keep monitoring on these cattle, um, their intakes. Intakes need to be very consistent both with what kind of feed and ingredients, moisture, and it also needs to be very consistently delivered. Uh, one problem that we sometimes see is uh, a weekend or a holiday crew might feed at a different time of day than the regular weekday. And just that consistency oftentimes throws the, the, uh, the rumen off. We see acidosis and we can see other issues and enteritis issues because of, of timing. So consistency from start to finish is very important in feeding feedlot cattle. I want new employees to understand that we would like them to ask any questions if they don't know what's happening on our operation. That animal health is number one here that we need to maintain healthy, strong animals so that animals can grow to the potential that they need to without having any issues. A healthy herd is vital to an operation. When we're looking at economics of feeding cattle, uh, health plays a major role in that. Uh, we need the cattle to come in and arrive at a feed yard and start off healthy and maintain their health through the entire feeding period. Uh, of course, it, it's, it's vital for animal welfare in any operation and when cattle are healthy, they're happy. When they're healthy and happy, they're growing, and economics uh, makes sense in an operation like that. Yeah.